All right, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Oh, boy, are we ready. <laughs> I hope you are. <laughs> Welcome to a new year and a new, I, I don't know, sometimes people in the podcast world call it a new season because it's a new year. I, I don't get that. It's, it's, it's a new show. There you go. We're here. We're live. It's a new show. And how else can I start off a new year but without the biggest bang in the world that I know especially? The one, the only, the president, Mr. Mark Gus Scott. My dude, how are you? Mr. Agney, how are you, sir? I'm honored to be here in the new year. <laughs> yeah, the season thing's kind of like TV, isn't it? Hey, you know what? It, it really is. It's funny because you, you sent me something that we're going to play in a little while. Like, I'm learning more and more. And this is so much better than doing the old, the, the audio thing that we did for so many years. I'm with you 100%. And I'm, well, the question is, where does it go from here? I think it's only getting better. Your show has grown. The quality of what you offer has grown. You're now on several networks. Man, I got to tell you, God bless America, pal. Totally Driven TV is the way to go. And oh, it has my vote number one. Absolutely. Look at that. And you know what? You, you always have our vote. Uh, <laughs> God bless you, pal. You know I love you. It's been a long time we've been together, man. And I got to tell you, uh, let's just keep it going. Uh, man, you look great. Look at you. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. You know what? Like, uh, you know, let me let me say, let me. I want to say this right off the bat, and, and this is, um, this is this is truly from the heart. You know, we come on here, and, and from day one with you, it's 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 been a circus. It's been a ball. It's just been a lot of fun. It really has. And you know, it's funny because I go back in time and I think to myself, like, wow, like back in you know 1990 or 91 when that first Trickster album came out, and I, and I. Love the band and I love the music, but for something about you, I didn't really like or love. And I, and I don't know what it was. You were no offense, but you were my least favorite member of the band. And then I, I don't even remember what our first interview was that you were promoting, but you know, within five minutes, I'm like, this dude's the best. Like, I love this dude. <laughs> it's like an infection. <laughs> <laughs> and and to take it a step further, honest to God, um, like we, we've probably done at least a dozen interviews over the six, seven years that we've been doing this together. And, you know, out of 600 plus interviews, I mean, you're probably one of maybe six to a dozen people that I've interviewed that I, that I can truly call a friend now. And you're actually for sure one of maybe only three or four people of that group. Who's reached out to me, you know, on on a semi regular basis, um, you know, just you know, with everything I've gone through in the last couple of years, and just uh, and I, I'll get the the random text message at three in the morning. Hey man, just checking in on you. How you been? You all right? All good? You need anything? And, and I and like seriously, from the heart, like dude, I love you and I thank you so much for all that, your friendship and all the fun. Uh, you've brought to my life with these interviews. The, the honor is mine, pal. The honor is mine. And I think, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't screw around. I, I, I have a good time in life. I don't do things unless I want to do something, you know. And uh, you know, as far as having you as a friend, the honor is truly mine. That is well question. I, I appreciate that, man. I really do. So uh, as people can see, I, I mean, you have a, a huge banner in the background. But yeah, God bless the question I, I got to ask is, like, do, do you want to tackle that first or do you want to tackle uh, your your old world of life that everybody knows you're from first? Which Buddy, this is your show. You got something to ask, you let it rip, and, you know, I'll just throw some fire right on there. <laughs> you know, but I, I've got a lot going on. Uh, primarily, uh, you know, I, I put a lot of stuff aside more recently as far as music. I put backseat on some of that stuff to concentrate on American Premium Vodka, my new brand. But... Uh, Life's not over yet, pal. There's, there's a lot to be done, you know. But uh, right now, the vodka certainly is my number one priority. But you got questions? You want to start chronologically? You go right ahead. I got no problem with that at all. <laughs> well, let's go chronologically since you, since you threw it out there. You got it. All right. You know, and I can't believe this. Like, I actually had to go back and look. So, you know, 18 months ago, I interviewed uh, your, your longtime friend, brother, bandmate, uh, Steve Brown. 
And that was 18 months ago. I can't believe that. And then we did a follow-up interview to his comments that he, he said about you. Um, and at that point, you guys had not talked. And that, was, that interview was actually a year ago. So the, the question I have to ask, and I'm sure I, I've already gotten a half dozen messages today about this. Have you and Steve talked? Have you and PJ talked? I know, um, you know, I know there's kind of like an east west like divide going on. Like, can you give us an update? I hate to say it, there really has been no change since the uh, last time we spoke. I haven't spoken to PJ or Steve at all. Wow. Uh, there has been no activity as far as uh, putting the band, you know, successfully back together at all. And to be honest with you, although my, uh, you know, my my skirmish with those guys may be more well known, there's more there's more layers to the problem between us, uh, and unfortunately, and uh, it, it you know it involves the whole band, you know, yeah. as far as uh, seriousness to play and things like that, or where they prioritize that thing. But you know that that's neither here nor there. I think overall, there's no deep part of desire on some people's part to really put it back together. You know, and uh, that's the biggest shame of all, you know, and I think that's also the biggest obstacle to me as far as me even having the desire to reach out, which sounds terrible. You know, I mean, uh, honestly, as a friend, uh, you know, that, that's something that I wrestled with myself. You know, yeah. I, mean, dude, I honestly, you know, whether he pissed me off, I pissed me off is somewhat immaterial. You know, th those, those sorts of things ought to take a secondary seat to, to, to anything else that we've accomplished together. You know, and that should always be a priority. So at one point, you know, I, I, I got to believe I, I, I'm going to break down, give a shout at least and uh, say, hey, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it's, it, it's stupid that it's gone this far. And I'm, I'm, you know, myself to blame is equally as well. So uh, but no, as far as making any progress, unfortunately, no, there's been none, you know. And uh, I think the biggest problem is there are some people that really just do not care, just do not want to do it. Yeah. Uh, to the level that it takes to want to put it back together, and that's that's the biggest shame for everybody. I think that that you know that that's ultimately what bothers me the most. I think that, that, that's what I was gonna ask. Like, I, I mean, everybody sees you know uh, PG's out, PJ's out doing a bunch of stuff, and he's now in Fozzy, and uh, Steve's doing a bunch of stuff, and uh, he's got all his different projects he's doing, and um, does it, but. Trickster aside, I, I mean, and you kind of touched on it slightly. Trickster aside, I, I mean, you guys were brothers. I mean, you guys did so much together. Doesn't that, I, and you can't answer for them, but for you, doesn't that hurt just a little? When you say it hurts, uh, yeah, oh, I mean, as far as yeah, putting everything else aside, yeah, it sucks. You, you know, that really does suck. The fact that you know, anything we have has possibly created this rift to where we don't want to bridge that gap. That sucks. Yeah, completely, 100%. And we're all to blame for that, you know? And I think the biggest reason why I don't reach out, why, you know, a bigger effort has made on anybody's part is something, Dave, how are these guys out with all these other projects doing all this other stuff? And they didn't care to do tricks to first, you know? Uh, they they failed to believe that there was potential to be at least you know like the idea of us going back to Japan. Oh, what a horrible idea that would be! No, oh, it couldn't possibly be successful if we did something like that. You know, the idea of really approaching uh, approaching the situation with a certain mind frame. That's the part that kills me the most. Like you actually don't see the potential or have the desire for that. I mean, you know, if, even if you know we did not have the potential, I love the music so much. Like, you know, I, I would do it for nothing. I'd pay somebody to get on that stage, you know, whereas they do not apparently do not possess that desire at all. And wow. that I find <laughs> exponentially more inexcusable. Maybe, you know, maybe that's the best way of putting it, or at least at least to me, you know, and uh, you know, that I think that hurts even more. So, you know, it's like, how would you not want to do that? That that was what we lived for. That was what, you know, we would have killed. For. Right. Some of us. Still. <laughs> but. But yeah, so so I guess that's uh, maybe the biggest question that's unanswered, and that's the kind of thing those guys never wanted to sit down and talk about, even during the good times, even when we were out there doing it. It's very strange. There's an elusive quotient to the whole thing, man, because some people have not been on the level with the whole thing either. So, but at the end of the day, it's desire. I think that's right. the one, the one quotient that has yet to really. Well, that, that's the biggest festering sore. 
How's that? You know, yeah, and I think yeah. even above brotherhood and all that, that's the part that, you know, prohibits progress. You can't really want, you want it to care to do it. And uh, it's, it doesn't suck yet. It sucks. <laughs> now, how about that? Now, this is something that 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 kind of. Uh, to, to put it bluntly, twist my balls a little. Um, like when Let's I see that question. <laughs> <laughs> What's the what, name? <laughs> what, when, I, when I see um, is Pete in I, this conversation? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> poor Pete! If I can give him a call, <laughs> it, 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 it figures Pete, Pete the singer is usually is the most quiet guy out of the three out of the four years. <laughs> I give a couple of drinks, ain't so fucking quiet. <laughs> <laughs> give some of that American premium vodka. We'll we'll get the truth oh, yeah. out. <laughs> but when when I see like in the last few days with um uh Steve and PJ are are doing shows with um you know Eric Martin and, and Joey Casada, which they've done on on and off the last couple of years. Um when I see the trickster social media is pumping this stuff out, you know, I, I'm just like Ooh. It's one of the things where the four original guys are alive. They're here. They're able to get up there and do it. You know, why Why not? Why not? No, no, no. When you say we're alive. <laughs> Listen, I, uh, I share your frustration. I share the bad taste in the mouth. I share the incongruency factor of having it alive and it's not really fully alive. So... Hey, you know, I, I unfortunately don't really have much to say about it because I don't think I really have to. You know, I get that same feeling that, that you're talking about, too. And I think a lot of other people share that as well. And, uh, hey, if that's their choice to do it, you know, that's another thing. How do you really have that choice to do it? I mean, Eric's funny. Great guy. You know, uh, uh, love. and uh, I'm sure they sound wonderful when they play live. But, you know, that's uh, neither here nor there. And, uh, you know, people still come to see them. And God bless. You know, well, more power to them. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know what? If they're happier that way, hey, you know, this was always a democratic situation. You know, like uh, I said, oh, this could be the best song. And three guys said, Gus, that song sucks. That's the way it worked, pal. You know, I wouldn't go to bed at night. Oh, it's bullshit. Oh, it wasn't hard. That was never the situation, never a problem. You know what I mean? Uh, that, that's really just the way things worked out. So. You know, if that if that, they're happier doing that, then hey, I just wish they would have talked to somebody about it. You know, right. and uh, right. at the end of the day, I, I, I again the the whole thing that is the part that everybody doesn't see is that there's there's people that don't want to you know stuff, or they don't want to do it to the extent right. uh, that that it needs to that it, that it should be done or done at all. Well, I, I'm I'm gonna like. I'm just going to keep saying this. Like every time you come on here, I'm going to have to bring this up, and I'm going to. Uh, and even when I oh, talk that's to right. Steve, I don't MC discourage today. the question. It's just no. I know. You know that. I'll be honest. With you. I don't understand it 100 percent myself. I really <laughs> don't. You know. And even when I was in the like, what the hell's fucking up with these guys? Yeah. And it, I've said it a hundred times before. And this is the funny thing that I still don't understand. Like we, when when you see the videos of us clowning around and busting on each right. other, whacking each other in the show. That's a hundred percent real. It's not scripted. We're a bunch of goddamn goofballs. We've been that way for forty goddamn years together. You know. So right. the, the only thing that you don't see is when it comes time to talk about business, everybody splits. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, we need to talk about some. You know, talk. You know, get get your ideas. You know, together. And which way you're going to go? You're not going anywhere. And that's kind of what happened with us. You know, and not, this is not the first time either. You know, and when there is a problem, you don't address it for a few years. It becomes a real freaking problem. And uh, unfortunately, that's that's really what happened. And it's, uh, it, it, it gives me no pleasure to tell you about it. That's for sure. Well, I'm going to say uh, I, I was trying to work on getting the Runaways back together. I had Lita on board. I had Sheree Carey on board. Joan Jett was, was she, it was funny. Like after I interviewed them, they were both like, yes. And then I reached out to Jones people, and Jones people immediately, they're like, we heard the interviews, and no. So, the reunion... Did they offer any reads or anything like that? Was there any... Jones, uh... Jones yet just... She, she didn't want to do it. I don't understand why. So, the reunion... Yeah, because she's got the opening gig on the freaking stadium tour. She's making a bum kind of kick-ass deal. When you're yeah. on top, you know, that'd be idea. I mean, maybe there is potential, but that, that that's somewhat of a different situation, you know? Uh, and I th I've heard, I, I don't want to mention any names, but I know there's other situations where, let's say, a lead singer, one individual goes from the band and is 
You know what I mean? They don't want to relinquish that top spot, not to yeah. mention doing things the way that they want to do it, you know? Yeah. And maybe, and again, that's not all situation, but maybe that individual is also profiting at a greater uh, ratio than they would be if they had to split it with four or five exactly. other people. Exactly. So, you know, there, there's a lot to be said. Every, you got to respect every situation yeah. and everything is just a little bit different. And the reasons for people doing things are much different. When you don't sit down and talk about it with your brothers, I think that's a crime. And I think that's the crime that's perpetuated for a long time in our camp. You know, it's it's very sad. But uh, hey, forward we move, my friend. Now, how, how about you musically? Because I mean, have you ever have you been approached by you know, for some reason? Like when I was thinking of this, the the, the first band that popped in my mind was uh, was Rat because you know Bobby Blotz was in, he, but he's out, he's in, he's out. I think to myself, I wonder if Gus was ever approached to be like being a Rat or somebody like that. Uh, rock and roll, not so much. There was one uh, thing that I was asked not to talk about. <laughs> there was one uh, band. Funny, funny thing, when I when I left church for the first time uh, back in 95, and this is really weird, just at the end of 94, I was approached to audition for Foreigner. And uh, I was uh, I, I, I was uh, committed to doing the tricks the tour in January. So I told them I could not do it. And, I, and it's funny, I had a very good friend of mine, uh, Vicky, who is a, uh, a, a big time tech for Whitney Houston, started doing okay. some stuff with Warner people. And he I said, dude, got you an audition, SIR New York, go right, go, 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 go. I said, dude, I can't, I'm going out with the trickster next week. You know, he said, dude, come on, gotta go, gotta go. And I uh, I, I told him, no, my, my, I was committed to trickster. And uh, listen, I appreciate it, thank you, but uh, blah, blah. You know, and funny thing, just like a month later is when I quit the band. So uh, a weird, set of events after that i also had the uh guitar player uh bobby masano who was a uh, guitar player for uh billy squire and mm -hmm. uh luke graham reached out and wanted to go on the road and do some stuff so so there's been some projects things like that even had a project with chris caffrey the trans-siberian orchestra for a while but okay. realistically as far as uh, all set bands do taking over like that no when i left in 95 i got married got a house i really changed my life so mm -hmm. things that came in i kind of blew to the wayside you know i wasn't just good, you know, going to buy a house, get married, say, bye, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was not my plan. I really got away from it. And also, not to mention, uh, music was in a much different place at that point, uh, you know, where where MTV wasn't thriving. So the tours back then were a hell of a lot different than what, let's say, what they are today. So, you know, my mindset was different. And then, you know, towards the end of my marriage, I got back with Tricksters. So. <laughs> My availability has not uh, been there, but there's been a couple of other things that have popped up that uh, A, didn't work out, or B, I had to shun, and uh, you know, and that's life, but hey, who knows what the future has to bring, but I'm not waiting around for anything, and uh, there's a lot of side of line. Honestly, I think one problem with me is that I'm not in the middle of the mix of everything. I'm not in LA. I'm not actively with, hanging with everybody in the mix on what's going on, so I'm not necessarily right. the first person because I'm not there. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I really yeah. wanted to pursue that or really entertain that idea, I'd be in the mix more. And I, I more or less shy away from it as opposed to aggressively go after it. Uh, but, you know, hey, that's, that's just what I'm doing. But the thing is, that, I mean, overall, um, you, you, you seem happy. You know what I mean? You, you don't seem like you're sitting there like, you know, I'm I'm not involved in this. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. I'm happy. <laughs> I don't know how many times people see. You know, I have a different life now here. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, I got the biggest unexpected surprise that I had in moving here. It was beautiful. That I mean, the land, the land is great. The, uh, the the vibe of the people are fantastic. But the unexpected surprise of the whole thing was the family of individuals that I have out here, particularly a group known as the Five. Myself, Wild McBrown, uh, Dominicino Hosa, otherwise known as Cabo Dam, uh, El Roberto Cisco Rodrigo, otherwise known as the great Bobby Sis from <laughs> Drop Diesel, and uh, Michael McAndrews. They're, they're, they're my closest of close friends. And I got to tell you something, we, uh, they've become my family. Uh, these are guys that I hang with every weekend, every weekend. I swear to Christ, every weekend is the best weekend. And to have this <laughs> nucleus family, and that, that's just the type five of us. There's also a bunch of guys that revolve around it. And uh, it, it has become a family of people that, uh, that, that I just can't even believe I have a chance that, to have love in my life on that level like this. You know what I mean? Tight of tight. Uh, and, and people you can count on. And, and people have so much fun. God, we have so much fun. 
It's really just stupid. Yeah. And it's hard to believe, but people that have tasted it and have hung out with us, they don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I you can know, imagine. You get a camera crew to follow us for a weekend, you got a few episodes, my friend. Believe me when I tell you, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I'd be very scared if I was out there with you <laughs> and your crew because – I, for some reason, I don't know. I think you and me are too much alike. Oh man, we no. I'm telling you, we 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 have a <laughs> lot of we're somewhat responsible, but we have a hell of a lot of fun. We really do, and it's hard to describe. Oh, we have such a. What do you mean to have a good time, <laughs> dude? I can't even begin to explain. You spend a couple hours with us, you're like, okay, now I get it. <laughs> it's out of control. We just had friends come in from out of town. They were in Idaho. They come and see where we hang out for one weekend. They don't want to leave. They keep coming back, man. I swear to God, good friends, Judd Ball, Travis, and his wife, Jody, uh, Shay. God, we love you guys. You know, Chris, oh, God God bless you, pal. And Stacy, love you. Thanks so much for coming out. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, I tell you, the best Christmas Eve, the best New Year's Eve, the best holiday season. And even when it's a regular Tuesday in freaking June, we have the best damn time every time. I'm probably going to – what's today? Hey, Tuesday? We might we might go to this uh, neighborhood watering hole and, and uh, meet up. And even just on a freaking what's today Wednesday on a Wednesday mm-hmm. night we go if we start throwing dice and throwing anti down on the ground and having some drinks but we have the best goddamn time and you have <laughs> enough people and it's I cannot verbally explain exactly what happens but if you're in it you don't want to leave you keep coming back the guys here tonight you know we have the whole time we have these sponges hanging on us you know it's just so much fun you will have to ex- experience it one day, dude. I'm telling you Absolutely. what. It is un- Absolutely. It is unexplainable. It is unexplainable. But I swear to God, it is the greatest goddamn thing in the world. <laughs> it's too freaking funny. Now, at what point do the guns come out? Oh, I don't know. So, I'll be honest. You know, everybody makes a big deal out of it. Here in Arizona, every day. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just it's just a part of life. It, you know, it's it's weird as a kid growing up in Jersey. Here's a here's a funny story. Uh, my, my first gun story, uh, and and this kind of exemplifies what I'm talking about here. Uh, growing up in Jersey, you know that you're definitely not allowed to have a handgun. I, I got a, a permit to to purchase handguns and to carry quote unquote uh, rifles and shotguns, where you're allowed to possess them basically and have them in your car. Uh, you need to have to get the permit. It's a complete pain in the ass. Uh, so, so, you know, obviously it's a very, uh, you know, a sensitive item, New York, you're not even allowed to, and New York city, you're not even allowed to have. So, uh, coming out to Arizona, you get a driver's license. Yeah. You just go to the, you go to the gun store and just go get your stuff. Done. It's no big deal. You know, it's like, wow, it's like really strange. Uh, first time I had the big story, that the story I was having first time I actually uh, was instructed on pistol was in 1990. I had a good buddy in uh, Jersey who, uh, w- w- joined the Marines and came out to, uh, Colorado. <clears throat> so he said, hey, Gus, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just in getting a nine millimeter. He says, oh, let's go to this store. I got a bologna sandwich, a bag of chips, and a nine millimeter pistol. I was like, oh, my God, wait, I'm crazy. I mean, now that's in Colorado. You can't do that in Jersey. But in Colorado, <laughs> you can. You know, I was like, oh, so he takes me up to the Rocky Mountains. Beautiful day. It was, uh, I don't know, a late spring or something like that. It was just a beautiful day. I'm up in the Rocky Mountains. I'm a kid from Jersey. I'm like, holy crap, the greatest thing in the world. All right, so he says, now you, here's how you cycle your dead, but you do this, point down there. Okay, steady, steady, good, gun. Say bang, bang, bang. There's a, this is an outdoor area where there's a mountain behind you. It's a block, I'm trying to be responsible, you know, little alleys. A lot of people tend to shoot in there, you know, it's a big deal. So I got there, and I'm going, bang, bang. I, I look over my, my right shoulder, and there's this cop car slowly coming by. I'm like, oh my God, I'm I look over, and the cop rolls down, and he goes, how you doing, fellas? Uh, off he goes. Now, if that happened to me in Jersey, I'd be right? fucking in jail. But that's just another day in Colorado. And it was completely legal as to what I was doing. But my inner instinct from growing up in Jersey is like, oh, my God, I'm doing something wrong. And guess what? I wasn't. How nuts is that? You're in freaking Pennsylvania, right? In Philly? I mean, dude, what would happen if you were just, you know, 100 feet off the road just Plinking at some cans, you down the ground. Helicopter response. Walking <laughs> off in, in Philadelphia today. Bayrack was arrested. You, it would be like I'll tell you, in Colorado. It's like, hey fellas, hey, how's how you doing? <laughs> so, so yeah, and that that that's very similarly, if not more, l- l- less restraints than in, in Arizona than you find in Colorado. So you know, it's just that. So everybody makes a big deal out of guns here. It's no big deal. 
you know? So the stigmatism factor is different because people grow up with them here. And hopefully more of them are educated about it too. I think that's a key component as well. You know, when something is shunned in a certain area, you lack the education of what it's really all about. And the stigmatism grows in an area that it's shunned. It's like the baby effect. Tell a baby not to do something, guess what they want to do? You know what I mean? So when it becomes a non-issue, oh, you know, I've been touching guns since I was four or five years old, it, you know, then you're responsibly trained on it. You have a, a familiarity with the thing, and it's not like a deceitful thing you go to do. It's just something you have a responsibility with. It, you know, so there's a different mindset, a different approach to the whole thing. And I think people that live in Jersey, let's say, or Philadelphia don't necessarily understand, you know, that kind of mentality. And I think that also spreads for political parties as well. And I think you know where I'm going with that. So, you know, here, here's another thing. I have several firearms. I have a, a, a an extraordinary amount of ammunition, a magazine. I, that doesn't mean I, I'm more likely to kill some. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, the, the, so, so, so I, I think it's interesting to explore the dynamic of what people say uh, is going to happen, what, what they believe the truth to be versus actual reality. You know, it's funny as you were uh, starting to to talk about this whole uh, gun thing, and I, I, I read, I was flashing in my head. I'm saying to myself, could Gus become like the the new Ted Nugent? Uh, well, I mean, he's got that locked up, and he does a great job. He is, <laughs> Ted Nugent, Ted Nugent, he is one of my mentors. You know, he's a great guy. Does a very well educated. I think that's number one. You know, I, you know, yeah, he makes it sensationalistic and cool, and, and that's funny. But, you know, when he, he even in all that crazy ranting he does, there's a lot of truth to what he has to say. And I think people need to look at that more. They need to look, you know, I don't want to say educate themselves, but be open to the idea of the way they think is not necessarily the way it is, you know. And I think whether you're Democrat or Republican, that's the sort of ideology that's happening now to create a greater rift within this country. And I think uh, both sides of the aisle have to look the things they believe and look at the other side and say, maybe they may not believe in it, but why do they believe it? You know, get an idea. I think that's the kind of thing we both need to sit down and have a drink about and talk about, you know, and I think that's a, that's a huge, you know, a big, a big staple of what American premium vodka is all about. Not just vodka. It's an ideology. You know, the thing, particularly now, one of the big reasons why I brought it to, brought it to light and the political climate we're in now, I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. I'm not, I'm not preaching any one side. It really doesn't matter what, I like, but let's look at what's going on in this country. We will not move forward as a country if both sides don't come together. We have more things that unite us than divide us. And if we really don't concentrate on those things, instead of concentrating on crazy propaganda like, and I hate to bring up certain things, but the things that divide this country, like Black Lives Matter, like uh, critical race theory, things like that, by guns and issues like that, that those are the things that are going to put a separation in this country. And I, that's terrible. I think both sides need to sit down and have a conversation about it instead of just being at odds about it because the rift in this country is bigger than it ever has been. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. And, and I think uh, I think they need to sit down with a, a nice bottle of American premium vodka and uh, have a few shots or a glass. I'm, I'm not opposed to a glass. You can sip it, you know. You don't have to just belt you it back. It. <laughs> and, and, and have a very truthful heart-to-heart conversation. 100%, yes. And, and, and again, that, that's really the essence of what I'm going for here. I don't promote one uh, party over the other as one being right, one being wrong. That is the wrong sentiment to bring to the table. 100%. This brand is for both sides of the aisle. And, you know, it's the ideology of doing something different, not taking a stand on something because that, that that's what somebody whispered in your ear. You know, I think the American people are smarter than that. They need to be smarter than that. Absolutely. Let me, uh, I, I want to throw a question on this. Again, we have this modern technology. I can throw a question on the screen before we oh, dive into dude, the whole. Oh, dude, I don't see that. cool crap going on here. Yeah. yeah. So before we dive into the whole uh, American premium vodka. So we have a question from Mindy, and she wants to know, are Gus and Pete ever going to do any music together? Uh, you know, it's funny. We did. Um, <laughs> funny thing you mentioned rap earlier. Uh, we're very good friends with Jordan Zip. And uh, okay. we actually recorded a few songs with him. Me, Pete, and, and Jordan, and uh, another bass player, uh, Jacob. Great guy, Jacob Goldberg. But uh, we also did some stuff with uh, another good friend of our, Rob Creasy, who's in a band, Hot Crazy, right? Uh, out of L.A. with Jordan. 
But uh, we uh, we did some recording. We, did, we haven't really did. One was a completely final track, and it, and it sounds pretty damn good. Uh, you know, again, I, I think that desire factor, that there, it does not, if everybody's off in different directions doing stuff. We did it as a fun project, and we had a lot of fun doing it. It came out sounding really good. The fact that we never released it is kind of criminal. It, it's been done for a couple of years. <laughs> it, it's, it's literally in the can for a couple of years. Uh, we had it mastered the whole deal. And uh, who knows what the future may bring. Maybe we'll unleash it one day. But Jordan's off doing something now in Los Angeles with a band called Hot Crazy. And, and they sound good. I'd recommend give them a Google or check them out on YouTube, particularly Hot Crazy. And they're uh, they're rocking, man. They got some interesting new stuff going on. It's really Really cool, great, excellent production, great songs, you know. So uh, again, everybody has certain priorities that they want to do, and 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 if that's cool. God bless you, you know. But the fact that we actually did this music, we didn't put out or do anything with it, yeah, that gets my butt a little bit. But dude, you know, maybe, who knows what's going to happen next year? So we'll see. Well, next year is now, so throw that music out there and let's. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, I'm busy. <laughs> let me tell you something. I'm busy this year. I am busy this year. <laughs> I waited enough for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the driver's seat. I'm going to make this year happen. This is my year. I don't care. I don't. You know, at that point, I, I I have I have something to do here. I really do. Well, let's see if I can get this to work now. So I guess it was about about a month ago. I get this text message from Gus, and uh, he sends me this <laughs> video clip, and I'm watch. I start watching it, and I'm like, I got all excited first of all because I'm like, he's freaking running for office he's going to do it and then, I, and then i'm like the son of a bitch is putting vodka out <laughs> i'm like oh my god and then I'm, I'm like after i watched the full thing i'm like i was like not even i was inspired to be an american let alone drink american premium vodka so i want to play this let me see if i can play this now for everybody if the case for some reason they haven't seen it let's let's see my fellow Americans, let the message ring out that from this day forward, when you buy American, you buy the best. Handcrafted. Something premium. Something pure. For this is the very essence of what our servicemen and women gave their lives to protect. And by God, we shall not allow their sacrifice to be forgotten. It's time to show the world just how great American can be. And we will not wait for tomorrow to come. We will stand here this moment together and we will start today don't ever forget how great it is to be american the america we need right now american premium vodka celebrate response I got I got chills watching that like up the back of my neck. I got chills from watching it. Yeah, that's the idea. That is the idea, and this is a vision I had for a long time, and uh, I, you know I sat on it for a long time. And I'll tell you, with the way the political climate is today, it is not the America that I that I want, and uh, I think a lot of other people feel the same way. And we have to do something about it. At least call their attention towards the greatness of America to, to what it, 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 I think those are the ideals that are being brought down. I think those are the things that we haven't seen. You know, we forget how great it is to be American. And the more we forget about that, I believe the worse this you know, more in a hole we're going to be. And uh, I, I mean, that, that is truly what inspired the creation of the brand. And I think a lot of people hopefully will agree with me. You know, this is truly what I believe. And I think a lot of other people believe similarly. And uh, like I said before, it's not promoting one side of the aisle more so than the other. It's not endorsing one uh, more so than the other. It's the idea of both parties coming together and attempting to make something, make a better America. Because without us coming together, we will not make a, we're going to end up where we are right now. And I think that is a problem. So this is a look as far as waking people's minds up a little bit, just a different ideology to walk in a certain direction. And maybe this is the kind of thing we ought to sit down, have a drink and talk about. So uh, how how do you get involved in the, in the freaking vodka business? I mean, I, I I would think this is a this is like a big to do. I mean, there's there you you need like 
bottlings and warehouses and 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 and, and making uh, vats and vats and vats of vodka. How does this all come together? Well, let me tell you something. It takes step by step, and and, and to be completely honest with you, every step is a complete pain in the ass. I, I, I cannot change it. I can't. Oh, it's the greatest thing. It is a complete pain in the ass, and probably more so a pain in the ass now than than, than ever before. Why? Uh, number one, let's look at the vodka market. I don't know how many people are really. You know, you don't have to be a great vodka drinker to understand that. Twenty years ago, there weren't brands like oh, Three Olives, Kettle One. Uh, that I can't. I can't begin to name Deep Eddies, uh, Ciroc. That the vodka market is so overpopulated. So the real idea of entering the vodka market is not the smartest idea in the world. Right. I chose vodka because I have a passion. I like vodka. You know. I also just see it resonating as the idea. The, the biggest thing that that bothers me was that uh, in vodka you have uh, uh, Russian vodka promoting Russia and, uh, and and celebrating the glory of Russia. There's uh, mm -hmm. a vodka that celebrates Iceland. There's vodka that celebrates Poland. Russia, uh, you know, uh, so many different countries, Czech Republic. There is not one American company that celebrates the greatness of America. That is inexcusable. That is disgusting to me. I do I not understand how that is even possible. What it took me, the great genius, to figure out that, hey, man, I love America. What are you crazy? How do you not get on board with that? You know what I mean? It's like, I, I you know, uh, and, and now, particularly when we need a brand like this and that's one of the big slogans here the america we need right now and man i'm telling you that i you know i'm a living embodiment of that phrase and it's the idea is to wake people up to hey you forget how great it is to be in this country would you rather be somewhere else you know let's right. start bringing this country back to where it was to where it ought to be and where it could be and i think that's the question is that the brand really attempts to ask people to look within themselves to look where we are where we should be and where we're at and where we can where, where we can go from here i think that's really important you know that's really what the brand's about fuck is almost secondary you know that's just the product along for the ride there's an ideology behind this and i don't care whether you drink vodka or not you know it's the kind of thing i want everybody to stop and take a listen to think about you know what we're doing here uh this is also a brand that raises money for our veterans you know arguably the, the most neglected asset that would that america has it, uh, you know, it, it, in, in, it, under their belt, how the hell they get uh, you know disrespected or forgotten, disregarded uh, to the level that they have? That disgusts me. And I'm not even a veteran. You know, it's funny. I I, I played taps in cemeteries since I was in high school, and you know, I guess over time I thought to myself, look at all these headstones, look at all these people. You know, I'm the guy at 16, 17 years old that's honoring all these people. It's like, where the hell is anybody else? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, that, that, I don't know, for some reason, that kind of struck me. Well, that's where it first hit me. It's like, how am I the guy? You, you know right. what I mean? Like, what the hell do I know? You know, and I've been doing it now for 40 some odd years. You know, I still do it now. I'm a member of Bugles Across America, where I play taps, uh, you know, for our service people all the time. You know, and, and I, I do so because I love to do so. You know, and this is not a compensated effort. The compensation is, is, is the honor of doing it for me. You know, that's why I do. Uh, so taking it one step further, the idea of starting a brand that raises money in honor of our American troops, our veterans, uh, and waking up awareness and celebrating the greatness of America. Yeah, people, let's get with the program here, you know, at least that's where I'm at. So whether it's vodka or not, I don't care. You know, I just happen to have a, I happen to like vodka. <laughs> and, yeah, to be quite honest with you, you know, uh, but honestly, like I said, Think about how many different vodkas there are, particularly in the last 15, 20 years. Oh, my God. It's not a smart way to go. It's really not. But for Americans, I believe it's the only way to go. And that's why I'm doing it. So how are you going to get American premium vodka to stand above the rest and get noticed by the American people that need to see this? Yeah, number one, I'm, atta I'm attacking it a lot different than most other companies. Most companies, they like, try to get on your local uh, liquor store shelves and things that way. I'm forging an alliance with the American Legion, and a lot of people don't understand what they do. This is, a, this is an organization that was ratified by Congress in the early 1900s. And I'll tell you what, what they do is something very special. They have a place for vets to go to continue to serve and give people the opportunity that couldn't serve an opportunity to serve now. Like I, I'm a proud son of the American Legion Pat Tillman Post 117 in Phoenix, Arizona. 
I'm so proud to be a member of what they do. People don't understand the amount of money that is raised on a yearly basis from the American Legion, upwards of over $90 million on an annual basis. And the idea that they do that in support of veteran charity, it's huge, man. We have motorcycle gang, the nationwide motorcycle gang that goes and, and raises money by riding. How freaking great is that? Oh, gee, let's not join that organization. <laughs> right, right. <Yeah. laughs> People who see me with my leather on you know, and social media and stuff like that. And, man, they do some of the coolest stuff in the world because they ride across the country. Oh, hello. Oh, and I get to carry a gun while I'm doing too. Woo -hoo, yeah. You know, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. And uh, they do a lot of great things, you know. And so the idea of having a great time with a great group of individuals, people that have that sentiment in their heart that want to do that sort of thing, you know, that that's a beautiful, beautiful group to be a part of and uh, raise money for such a worthy cause. And you know what? I believe that's something that makes America great. You know, I think that's something that makes a better, a better America. And I think uh, the more people that get involved with it, it's beautiful. But people don't also realize that there's 2 million members nationwide and 12,000 posts, over 12,000 posts in America. And each one, well, let's say a good 97% of them have a bar. Ooh, ooh. So you mean an American brand that raises money for veterans to go into over 12,000 locations that no one ever considered to be a primary target? Hmm. Mm. What could possibly be a mm. brand? To accommodate that, that uh, at the Forge, a national alliance with the American Legion for a fundraising campaign. That one dollar from every bottle sold goes to the American Legion in support of real American heroes, our veterans. Now, I don't think that's a good idea. No. Let, let's just put it back on the shelf, Bay. What do you say? Let me tell you something. American Premium Vodka is not just here about vodka. We're doing a lot, and we're going to attack it in a much different way than any other company has ever done before. And I intend to be the man to bring it to market, and I will go on tour across this country touring the posts of the American Legion one by one doing launch parties and having a great time raising money for veterans I swear to God I, I feel yeah. like I need streamers and balloons <laughs> I'm telling you I, I, can, I, I can hear the <laughs> crowd even the launch. wait till you see the launch this is merely the preemptive you know this is just starting to get the message out what's happening this is going to happen my friend we are gonna have a great time doing it I'm telling you what, this will be, this, this, this is something I've been planning for some time. We're putting a lot of thought, a lot of coordination into it, and I'm doing it from here. This is something I truly believe in. I believe this is something way overdue, and I'm looking forward to 2022 with great anticipation. I have a great, I have a lot of work to do. What, when, going back to when I, when you first sent me the video and, and, and you know, like you said, you're going to be donating one dollar off every bottle to the American Legion. When I saw that and heard that, it it moved me. I was like, "Wow, that it is." It should. And dude, I'm be honest. Yeah, with man. You. I wouldn't Here's... do it. I don't. I don't want to do it without doing a campaign. I don't want to do. It, you know what I'm saying? That's the whole reason behind the brand. It, like I said, it's not just vodka, man. You know what I mean? Maybe one day I'll do a different a, a different thing. But but for some reason, I like vodka, and I always pictured vodka as 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 the idea. And in sitting down, I worked with a consultant over at Ignite Beverages, uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Bob uh, Osborne, uh, crying out loud. He got me on camera here, so I'm like, I'm, I'm freezing up. <laughs> but uh, a, a fantastic guy over in Portland, Oregon, from Ignite Beverages. And uh, I tell you, the, we, we, together we refined the concept, and we did some things in the vodka market that really have not been done. And I think it speaks of American tradition. I believe it speaks in the heart of America and approaches the vodka market in, in, in a way that's never been approached before with a quality product from America that has yet to be done. And I think that's really, really important. And uh, I, I think there's a market for that. And it is something I believe in with the American premium brand that, uh, that I think wakes up Americans as to what's going on in this country and, and how we can make it better, even by just a little bit. Now, I, I, I got to ask this too, like as you were putting this all together, um, do you start to get like a taste test, like uh, to, to get your approval? It's not just the approval. Uh, it, it, number one, yes, of course, uh, approval, but it, it, there's, it's more to it than that. And here's, here's an interesting thing. I had to fly all over the country to different places. You know what I mean? Uh, sit oh, wow. down, see distilleries. Uh, they, you know, it, so it was fun doing it in the sense that I got to travel and, and, and do some, meet some great people along the way. And in my travels, I literally found the absolute best 
vodka in America. And it was so astronomically expensive, it was ridiculous. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, you know, it's like, if I, if I said, oh, I have the best vodka, and it's $100 a bottle, you're like, get the hell out of here, I'm not buying that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so you know, it, it's like interesting to see gold and then crap. It's like, let's find something towards the gold, but maybe, you know, a little more. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, so when you, what, one of the questions you ask is how you're going to expose this to the people. You cannot expose it to the people when you put it so far out of touch that they can't buy it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So the yeah. idea is to find something that mimics that million dollar taste, but you know you want to make sure it's an affordable something on the shelf. You know, particularly when you have bigger brands. Like I'm throwing one out. Let's say Smirnoff, which is the biggest selling vodka in the world. Uh, that, and one of the biggest reasons why is because it's the most affordable. One of the most affordable uh, decent vodkas in the world. So, uh, you know, that's that's my competitor. And when they're producing a million bottles a month, as opposed to a new guy like me, that's doing, oh, maybe 10,000 bottles every two months. You know, that that's a that's a, you know, a big thing to, to, as far as competition. I need my price to be reflective or competitive against the spear up against the other choices in the category. And there's right. so many other choices in the category. You know, that's it. whether you drink vodka or not, just, you know, when when you think about uh, entrepreneurship. Go down your liquor around next time and look at how many different damn vodkas there are. I was just going to say that. It's insane. It, yeah. So like I said, the choice to do vodka is not the smartest one. It really isn't. You know, this is a labor of love and something I believe in, particularly with the brand. And I believe that's what's really going to resonate in people, you know, uh, and, and putting our military first. I think that is a key quotient to waking up to you know, one of the greatest assets of America instead of them being discarded or ignored. I'm putting them front and center. And that's why I released that commercial that you saw. You know, that, that that's, a, that's a tribute to them. Thank you very, very much. And I will continue to promote this brand and raise money for our veterans because they should not be forgotten. Uh, you know, and I mean, you said a key point uh, earlier that it, it really it made me open my eyes. Like, oh, my God, he, it's, it's so right. You know, like you said, like how many different Russian brands are out there? Promoting Russia, the greatness of Russia, or Finland, or Iceland, or wherever the hell uh, all these different vodkas are coming from, and not one for America. Not one. Well, now there not, is one. Yeah, now now there, there is one. So that that's the, but that's the thing that I thought about most when I thought of the idea. Like I see people putting out brands. I say they're putting this and that, and, that, and, that, and like there isn't one freaking guy. I like, that's goddamn criminal, man. Are you kidding me? Are you, are you freaking kidding me? Uh, out of all the brands on the shelf, there's not one that celebrates America. It's like, really? Right. You know? And I'm going to put my head in the lion's mouth right now. First people think, they say, oh, Tito's is American. They're like, oh. Okay, and they make the, arguably the most, uh, the biggest, I think they're the biggest vodka in America right now. Not necessarily the biggest in the world, but they are they don't, the most powerful, uh, the most, yeah, pro, well, let's say the most powerful vodka in, in America. They don't necessarily celebrate the greatest of America. But the guy named Tito on it, you can't, I don't think you really can celebrate, you know, and, and they certainly don't capitalize on the fact they're from America, so to speak. They're from Texas, you know, and they make right. a fantastic product. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, I, I drink it myself, but uh, Americans come. American premium vodka is coming, and I've got a taste test for you. <laughs> so, I'm telling you what, and, and, and again, you know, you know, it, 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 I, I welcome people to do their own taste tests. That's why we're doing the launch parties. When I when I say I'm going on on the road and going on tour to the American Legion post, we will be having launch parties at several. Well, there's twelve thousand posts, so I can't get to them all. But I will be going around the country doing launch parties, and we're going to have taste tests on the spot, and you're going to see how great it is. You won't even have to pay for it. You know what I mean? I want you to come down and get a sample and try it and see what we're talking about here. That's how much I believe in the product. I believe in what we're doing. And I believe in the American Legion, and I think uh, we're going to have a hell of a time. We are going to have a hell of a time. <laughs> you got, you, you got you it. You don't even know what I'm talking about. You got to come hang out at a Legion one night. We have a Queen of Hearts every Thursday over at the Legion. There, there, there's. I, I shouldn't say gambling, but we we give away a lot of prizes. And people spend money, and they have a chance to win a lot of money. And and we have a lot of fun. Man. It, it's just a great group of people. There's no better way to spend a Thursday night than going to the American Legion. I swear to God. So <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I'm going there this Thursday. So it's actually Pete's <laughs> birthday. So I got I got to go quick and get over to Pete's house. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, I'm telling you what, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to, to understand. That's why I'm, I'm going to come to a town near you. And, man, 
when you come out to one of these parties, you go, okay, now I get it. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun. You got to get out here to Nashville. Well, to Tennessee, God bless Tennessee. Hell, been there before. We're coming back. You know it. You know, that's the thing. I'll certainly go to major cities. Uh, there's some cities on the list. I I'm not going to release it quite yet, but come March 15th. The American Legion birthday. That is when I will release the tour schedule, when we're going. And it's a launch party tour across the American Legion post. And, again, I don't know how many I'm going to be able to hit in six months, but it's going to be a busy six months. <laughs> so, and, and kind of weird, people also don't realize, do a Google search in your area for American Legions. I know in Phoenix there's like 15 different posts in the metro area. 15 posts. How crazy is that? So I'm not going to go to necessarily 15 of them, but I'll go to five or six. You know what I mean? So I, I have to I'll go to each area and figure out which are, which are the ones I'm going to be stopping at, uh, which ones want to have a great launch party. You know, there's some people that are more aggressive than others also with, with regards to fundraising for, you know, for, for the charities. And that's right. the ultimate goal. We want to raise money with everything that we do and, you know, and, and do as much as we can for veterans, get the awareness out what the American Legion is all about. What do they do? People don't know. They pass by a VFW. Well, they don't understand what a VFW is, the veterans of our foreign yeah. wars. You know, so yeah. that, that, that that's criminal, man. So the time is to wake people up and get that message out and show them what's going on here. And maybe you should be a part of that, you know, because, man, it's a great group of people that's truly involved. And we have such a fucking great time. I really don't know how better to say. Do you think uh, like uh, something that popped in my head, too, was like, is there a way for you somehow to get a hold of like a Sammy Hagar and say, yo, like I, I'm doing this. Is Can you have any? tips for me any ideas like he's been so successful in his brains well when i when i when i said that we're going to be going to different areas uh, things like that will come into, into play when a certain person is uh, available in a certain area that he has an interest in doing it we're going to schedule a tour around their schedule so that's being worked out through middle of march and come the middle of march we'll be making announcements and special guests will be on hand and things of that nature but uh, yeah. I believe it. you and I think very much alike. <laughs> and yes, I, I intend to I harness all the resources I, I have as far as friends and things like that. This is going to be a party, man. This really will. And I'm really looking forward to it. The press the press blitz on this will be very, very substantial. And uh, we're, I, we intend to put a lot of light on our veterans. Nice. Now, how about, uh, so when will this officially be available to the public? That'll be March 15th. That's the release date. That is okay. the American Legion birthday. That will be our launch date, number one. So uh, that's the date, uh, you know, that, that, that the full release. This, uh, what we're doing now, this is hype. This is fun. This is telling people what the hell's going on. People don't even understand what I said. Gus, you're making vodka? It's like, well, sort of. Say, you know, just so you know, I'm not necessarily the guy that's stirring the batch, but I'm the guy that tastes it before it goes in the bottle. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, finding those people, that was half the fun, you know, going around. And that was a challenge, too, to find the best vodka for the best price. You know, I, I like I said, I found the million-dollar vodka. It is the best vodka in the country, and it is a million dollars a bottle. You know, well, okay, it's $100 a bottle. Right. And you know, realistically, I wouldn't pay that, you know what I mean? Right. I, I really right. wouldn't. So how do you create a brand that really is embraced by the people? You have to make it tangible. You know, but yeah. I want to hold to a certain quality to where, you know, you're getting more than your money, but then you're getting a real great product. And it's truly from America. I mean, that how people people haven't done this yet. Somebody hasn't put, you know, made, made the greatness of America in a bottle. That's terrible. That's horrible. You know, really, really? I'm the guy? <laughs> how, who the hell? Who how the did hell you become the guy? <laughs> or are you a bunch of fucking idiots? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I, I say half jokingly, but it, when I first started the brand, I thought about it. I'm like, oh, my God. I went to the store and there wasn't one. There wasn't one. It's like, you got to be fucking kidding me. This was five years ago when I came up with the idea. You walk the house, there wasn't one. You know, and now you have a couple of brands that have red, white, and blue on them or something. You know, they try to capitalize off the pageantry, but they really don't celebrate the greatest or wake us up about what we've got going on in this country right now. And that's what this is about. And I do it with the American Legion and in support of our veterans. It's really that simple. And this is why, like Carla says, I vote Mark Russ Scott for president. Uh, you know, if I think this, but it's not too common. <laughs> thing is, I'm not running for president. I just assumed the presidency. It's actually a coup d'etat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 
where do we send everybody? Where should everybody go to keep up to date on American Premium Vodka? Will this be available in stores or just through American Legion Post? How's it going to work? No, no, it'll be available in stores and online, okay. like uh, things like that. The whole nine yards, yeah. Wherever you see your regular brands, you'll see this as well. It, uh, but the first primer, I'm telling you right now, the primary uh, distribution outlet that I'm targeting will be the American Legions and also surrounding military bases. I'm uh, doing a big campaign with uh, Luke Air Force Base in Arizona, so that's a big one. Uh, Trickster has toured just about every military base in the country. So we have some nice contacts there. And uh, by the way, there's a bar on every base. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I intend to visit many of them. Some of them I, I visited even more recently, you know, with, uh, you know, without promoting a bar. So the idea, you know, Trickster has always been somebody, you know, a bit, a bit of band that, that it was aware of, uh, you know, of our veterans and, and, and playing for our troops. You know, playing places like Fort Bragg and, and, and down in Fayetteville, North Carolina, you know, things like that. Going to Colorado Springs and going to Fort Hood and playing all these places. I mean, we, we played the crap out of them with kits. We did the same thing with Scorpions. We did it on our own. So, you know, it, the idea of touring with a product like America Premium Vodka to help raise money for our veterans, I, I believe, you know, we, we're going to have fun, man. These are going to be launch party tours where we're going to be tasting that vodka. And we'll be tasting it all night. <laughs> We're going to have a hell of a lot of fun doing it, man. That's really what it's all about. If I'm not having fun, then there's no point to doing it. I mean, let's let's get real. Absolutely. So, yeah. And that's why, like, honestly, that's what the American Legion is about, too. You know, we, sure, we raise money. We have ideas. We do fundraisers and stuff like that. But, dude, we have fun doing it. Uh, Dave Abrams, one of the great uh, uh, members of our, our post, 117 in Phoenix, he puts together a dart tournament every year. And you know it grows every year. Do you know how much money they're giving away this year? We're giving away fifteen hundred bucks. Imagine what we're raking in to get the veterans. It's like, dude. And you know when people come out for an event like this, it's beautiful. When people like they put their heart into doing something like that, man, that's what it's all about. That's the character of the people being employed to do make America great. You know what I mean? And, and it does. It doesn't come from some political leader. It doesn't come. From some slogan or something, it comes from here. You know, people's deep hearted desire to want to do it, and we have fun doing it. <laughs> you know, great. I want to get drunk, throw some ducks, I'm 1500 bucks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hello. You know, so when I say I'm going, I, I don't think people necessarily understand when I say I'm going on an American Legion launch party tour. They have no freaking idea what the hell I'm talking about. But when I do the first one live broadcast from our first launch party tour over at uh, the Pat Tillman Post 117 in Phoenix, oh, you're going to get a real good idea what it's all about. <laughs> I'm telling you what, you're going to want one to come near you. So be believe me when I say this is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. If it weren't, I would not be involved. I have no interest in not having a good time. Now, how about this? I, I was thinking this too, and uh, we have this question. Um, is flavored vodka, vodka in your company's future? Uh, I'd be stupid to say no. Right now, it's not in the immediate future. It's just launching the brand. Uh, right. And again, it's more than just vodka. The ideology behind American Premium Vodka is not necessarily just vodka. It's an ideology. It's, it's spreading a message and also, you know, raising money for our, for our troops, you know, for, for our veterans. I think that, that that's, you know, and veteran associated charity. So that is, uh, you know, it, that's such a secondary consideration in my mind right now. Is right. it? But here's another thing: American Premium Vodka is gluten free. Just so people know, when you introduce flavors into the market, I, I, I have not found. I don't think anybody has found a way to make flavored vodka gluten free. There's something in flavoring that uh, contains gluten. I'm not a scientist, but uh, again, American Premium Vodka is gluten free. I feel that's very important. I want to put that front and center. If I introduce flavors. I kill the gluten free. So in the event I approach it in the future, I have to be very careful about that. And that is just not on my immediate uh, uh, future's plate, so to speak. But it's interesting to think about. Sure, I used to drink a lot of Citron. I love pear vodka, things like that, you know, of other brands. Uh, so, you know, I have a personal uh, uh, desire for such a thing. But right now, it's launching the brand and doing it right and making sure I have a consistent quality. You know, when I start mass producing, I want to maintain that quality. That, that to me is, is problem one. Or that's, uh, you know, uh, that, that's mission one, you know. And uh, as we go on, I know how, how things work. You know, you, you start getting traction. The demand, when it increases, i got to make sure my supply chain is able to be met, you know. So I have some basic things that I'm thinking about now of problems I'm going to encounter right out of the gate that I need to tackle now and be ready for. 
I'm really not even thinking about flavor. I'm not that I haven't thought about it, but the biggest obstacle being when you introduce a flavor to a vodka, it becomes non gluten free. It can have gluten. And I have yet to find a flavor, yet to find a flavoring uh, that offers the opportunity of being gluten free. And I think that's important. So uh, I, I will conquer that possibly at one point. That is not my in the immediate future. Absolutely. Hey, you want some flavor in your vodka? Squeeze a damn orange into it. Get a pair and mash <laughs> it up and do it the right way. You know what I mean? And then make it fresh and gluten free. There you go. There you go. Yes, sir. Well, Gus, dude. I am very, very excited for this. I'm super proud of you. And uh, I can't wait to get my hands on that first bottle of American Premium Vodka. Dude, you know I'll be sending you one. You know it. <laughs> I'm going to have. I'm gonna come and have one with you. <laughs> Absolutely you are. Man, I love you. I can't tell you. Totally love you too, you, bro. Look, we, are, we are kicking butt, man. I am so happy for you. 2022 is our year, my friend. And let me tell you, when we come Absolutely. to the post by you, well, you know, Tennessee, dude, let me tell you what. Let's get this on camera. <laughs> it, it might be safer if we don't. <laughs> dude, uh, well, come on. Care about safe, dude. You, know, you want to make an episode? Let's make a fucking episode. <laughs> we can do that. We can Roll do that. All that beautiful bean footage. Man, I'm telling you what. I love I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. American Premium Bach is coming to town near you. The launch will be March 15, 2022. And God bless America. God bless the American Legion, our American veterans, and God bless you. We have the power to make America great. There you go. AmericanPremiumVodka.com. You're also on Instagram and Facebook. Correct. Yeah. Biggest hub is AmericanPremiumVodka.com. And like you said, there's links from the website to uh, the respective social media. And we'll have more introduced over time. But right now, the big two are uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have some fun, man. We're going to have some fun. That's it. Absolutely. Gus, congrats, and uh, can't wait for March. Hey, love you, my friend. God bless love America. You, Thanks so much, everybody. Take care, man.